Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla News episode 15. Cheap EVs are here, the Boring Company finished their Las Vegas tunnel, and the Fremont factory reopens, and yet another thief is caught by a Tesla. And the battery pack is getting close to the $100 per kilowatt hour. And Tesla puts up mysterious tower. All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. <laughs> Before we start, I just wanted to make some shout outs to my newest Patreons Joe Valander, Steve Moran, and Pitt Hostler, and Edwin Wilder. And Edwin, remember to send me your t-shirt size on Patreon. And Ivan, your t-shirt is finally on its way. I just couldn't send it here in all this lockdown, but it's on the way now. And thank you all for your support. And let's get into the news. In recent years, EV production automakers have focused on expanding choices for all-electric long-range sedan, SUVs and pickup trucks. That leaves an opening for smaller electric cars at the lowest price point for mass market consumers, mostly in Europe and Asia. Volkswagen is planning to fill this gap with a new brand of EVs selling for less than $22,000. But it's not really a cheap normal EV. It is just a small city car that they have turned into an electric version like the Seat Me, the Skoda City Go or the Volkswagen Up. Don't know if you even have these cars in the US, but their ICE version is pretty popular in Europe because they are so cheap. The electric version of this car is of course still a bit more expensive than their ICE version, but for an EV, they are very cheap. But unfortunately, they are also some of the most unsafe cars on the road, and they even made the electric version even worse because they took out the automatic emergency brake in the car because they couldn't find room for them in this very small car when they also need to fill it up with batteries. So not really a car I want to get into, because if you crash that one on the highway, you'll most likely die. But it's great to see that they are making more EVs and even these tiny little death traps of a car. But they are also really just meant for the city, this little scooter with lid. Last week, NASA astronaut Robert and Douglas conducted final training inside the SpaceX Crew Dragon craft simulator at the Jason Space Center in Houston, Texas, in preparation for the historic Demo 2 mission that will ignite a new era in American spaceflight. And the NASA astronauts have now officially entered pre-flight quarantine. Not because of the virus, but flight crew health stabilization is a routine part of the final weeks before liftoff for all missions to the International Space Station. And here is their very cool car that is going to drive the astronaut to the rocket. And oh yeah, it's of course the Tesla Model X. SpaceX also did a static test fire of the Falcon 9 ahead of their Starlink mission Sunday, May 17th, yes, today of this news episode, to launch the 8th group of Starlink satellite, Musk getting really close to turn on the internet in the US. The Boring Company has officially finished both tunnels for the Las Vegas Convention Center loop, so still on track for the 2021 target and probably sooner according to Elon. The system will assist moving people from one end of Las Vegas Convention Center to the other. However, it seems that the project is only the beginning for what could become an expansive tunnel network after Musk hinted that the tunnel would be expanded from the city's convention center to the majority of the Las Vegas Strip. Elon did tweet that the Boeing company will also connect Las Vegas hotels and airport. Autonomous Teslas in tunnel will provide individual mass transit. This is going to be so cool. I will definitely get back to Las Vegas just to try this out. So it appears when the first part of the tunnel is fully complete, the Boring Company will be shifting its focus on making the tunnels as a city-wide transportation system and eventually all the way to Los Angeles. Wow, keep on digging. 
And there is still progress at Gigafactory 4 Berlin. Tesla trains now deliver gravel four times a week, Monday to Tuesday, to build the construction roads. And the Gigafactory get its first pillar driven to test foundation. And Tesla installs mysterious tower at charging station. Is it a mega charger, Starlink receiver or huge battery? No one knows, but since Tesla put it up, you can bet there's going to be a lot of rumors, theories and speculations. But maybe it's just a cell tower. Who knows? We will have to wait and see. We are still waiting for battery day and we have to wait a bit more. Elon tweeted, we're going to have to push out the date or attendance will be very low. Maybe do in two parts, webcast next month and in-person event a few months later. But while we wait, we have got some news on the batteries themselves. Tesla, as we know, have partnered with CATL in China and we got some great news on price of the battery packs. The cost of CATL's cobalt-free lithium-ion phosphate battery packs has fallen below $80 per kilowatt hour, with the cost of the battery cells dropping below 60 kilowatt hour. CATL's low cobalt NMC battery pack are closing in on $100 per kilowatt hour. The auto industry have said $100 per kilowatt hour battery packs is the level at which electric vehicle reach roughly parity with internal combustion competitors. In comparison, the new low cobalt battery being jointly developed by GM and LG Chem are not expecting to reach this cost level until 2025. Hope Tesla will make the battery day webcast soon, simply can't wait anymore. And Elon finally gets to open his Fremont factory again. County official approved Tesla's safety plan to resume production in Fremont. And as you can see here, an employee have thanked Elon for the full accommodation and ensuring that the social distance is not only implemented in manufacturing, but also on the shuttles, making them all feel very safe. Good luck Tesla with ramping up production. Yet another thief gets to pay for trying to steal a Tesla. According to the owner of the vehicle, a Tesla Model 3, he was sitting inside his car when the suspect opened the driver door and demanded him to step out. Once the Model 3 owner was out of the car, the suspect reportedly sat in the driver's seat and attempted to steal the vehicle. Unfortunately for the suspect, the Tesla Model 3 is not an ordinary car. It does not require a set of keys, instead utilizing a key fob, a key card or the Tesla mobile app. Several key features of the Model 3, such as locking the door, could be accessed through the mobile app. With the suspect inside the vehicle, the Tesla owner used his mobile app to lock the door in the Model 3. Fortunately, the suspect did not seem to be familiar with the manual door release system of a Model 3, as he ended up stuck inside the vehicle until authorities arrived and he was arrested. Yeah, I said it before, but I gladly say it again. Don't mess with the Teslas, it will not end well for you. And some good news from Sweden, where 99% of all Swedish electricity is now generated by non-fossil fuel. Up 1% after the last coal plant was closed last year. In 2018 it was 98%, will we see 100% by 2022? I sure hope so, that would be very cool. And some good news from China, as of 2019, the Chinese public bus fleet was almost 700,000 buses. Transport Ministry annual state report reveals that 46.8% of the fleet was EVs, 21.5% was natural gas, plug-in hybrid was 12.3% and diesel only stood for 17.4%. Very cool to see this big country moving in the right direction. And speaking of China, let's take a look at the Gigafactory 3 Phase 2 construction, because they are already putting up the top of the workshop building. It even looks so much bigger than the Phase 1 in the background. But still amazing to see the quick pace they have in China, and a big thanks to Jason Yang for bringing all these great videos from the Gigafactory 3 from the very beginning. Jason, keep up the good work. 
And let's finish off with some good fun. This guy is driving his Model X while holding down the summon button for his Model S on his mobile phone. So the Model S is trying to get to him, but he keeps on moving in his Model X. This way he is driving two cars at the same time. Guess Elon's convoy system already exists. That is all we have time for in today's news episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family that also would like to get a weekly news update on everything Tesla and Elon Musk. If you're new here, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future episodes and other Tesla and Elon Musk videos. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. If you want to support the show even more, remember you can, for as little as $1, show your support for this show. And of course, get your shout out here on this channel. Go to patreon.com slash best in Tesla and choose your level of support. And a big shout out to all my patrons for making this show possible. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.